So if functional breathing is slow, that the number of breaths per minute is generally say 10, 12 breaths per minute. And ideally that we practice breathing a cadence of six breaths per minute, because that imparts so many different benefits. So functional breathing is generally slow breathing. And functional breathing is using the diaphragm. And you know good diaphragmatic breathing when you have lateral expansion and contraction of the lower ribs. So when the individual breathes in, their lower ribs should be gently moving out. And when they breathe out, their lower ribs should be gently moving in. So slow, deep, and the third aspect of it is light breathing. Not breathing hard, but breathing subtle. Because with human beings, we're just like, in a way, cars. How much air do you need for a given intensity of physical exercise? Or a given duration of physical exercise? Efficient athletes, they don't need so much air. They're able to go for a jog, they're able to go for a run, and their breathing is relatively light for that given intensity and duration of exercise. And conversely, somebody who would be very unfit, or somebody who has breathing pattern disorders, they go for a walk and their breathing can be heavy. That person may have asthma, they may have a respiratory lung condition, or they just may have dysfunctional breathing. So with physical exercise, the three things that we should be considering are breathing deeply, bringing the air down into the diaphragm, not taking so many breaths per minute. So breathing deep, so you're better off taking a fuller breath, but less often. That way it's easier to maintain nose breathing. And of course, nose breathing is going to have a better impact on diaphragmatic movement. The nose is connected with the diaphragm, the mouth is connected with the upper chest. So I think it's very important that functional breathing is not just about breathing efficiency during rest. That we carry those exact same patterns into physical movement. So we have the person who's doing physical exercise, whether they are going for a walk, a jog, a run or any physical exercise. How to breathe to increase oxygen uptake, to increase oxygen delivery and to breathe more efficiently and also to protect the airways. And I'll talk about that in another chapter. So going for a walk, going for a jog, make a conscious effort of slowing down the respiratory rate, not breathing fast and shallow. Slow breathing bringing the air deeper into the lungs so you have fuller breaths and light breathing, only taking enough air that you actually need. Don't overbreed. If you overbreed, blood vessels constrict. And also there's what's called a left shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. But in very simple terms, if you breathe too hard, not more oxygen gets delivered, but less oxygen. With breathing, less is more. With functional breathing, efficient breathing is light, quiet, through the nose, driven by the diaphragm, both during rest and during physical exercise.